Hi everybody, welcome back to City Suppers. I'm Tim Anderson, Master Chef Champion, and today I'm going to show you a classic Japanese dish. It's something that's really versatile, really simple, and really crowd pleasing, but it's something you can make with ordinary supermarket ingredients. And I'm talking, of course, about tempura. So for the asparagus, which is quite thin, we don't need to do anything to it except for get the woody ends off. And the best way to do that is to just take it by both ends and snap it. And where it snaps is the line between the woody part and the tender part. So we'll get rid of that or you can save it for stock. And there you go, asparagus ready to go. So for the broccoli, we're just going to trim the thicker ends off, which will be a little bit tough. And also they won't quite fit in the pan. So about like that, that's it. And now for the courgette, we're going to cut it into strips, basically. We're going to make the slices quite thick. So about uh, just shy of a centimeter like so and there you go the veg is all prepped up now for the fish and by the way you can use just about any fish you like white fish is better nothing too oily I've got some lovely fresh place which smells deliciously sweet I love flatfish it's so good and uh, it's been lovingly filleted by our fishmonger but we still have to get it into manageable sizes so we are going to just find the center of it. And it's really easy to do this with a flatfish because it's sort of got its own guides. There's a line down the center of the fillet that you can run your knife through. And flatfish is a really good fish for tempura too because it cooks really quickly because it is so thin. You can do things like cod or pollock or haddock, but you might want to cut it into smaller chunks just so the heat can get into it and cook it evenly quickly. All right. So that is the extent of our fish and veg prep. Now we're going to make a ponzu dip for the tempura. So add some good quality soy sauce first. They're not all created equal. Spend a little bit more on your soy sauce, folks. Next, we'll add some rice vinegar. Next, we'll add the citrus juice. So we've got soy sauce, rice vinegar, a little bit of lemon juice. We're also going to add some sugar, and that will sweeten it up just a touch. It's about 10 grams, about uh, two teaspoonfuls. And then lastly, just to add some nice nutty richness and counter the acidity a bit, a splash of sesame oil. Now you may have heard some uh, popping noises. That is, of course, our oil which is heating up. It's just plain vegetable oil, getting a little bit of moisture in there, so it's spitting back. And that's coming up to temperature. We want that at 180 degrees. It's almost there, but we'll just whisk our sauce in the meantime. Basically, you just want the sugar to dissolve and all the flavors to come together. We'll give it a taste. Mmm, perfect. You want it to be sharp, because obviously it's deep fried food, it'll be a little bit oily. But if it's too sharp, just add a little bit more sugar, maybe a little bit more sesame oil. Finally, of course, we make the batter. Now, the batter is probably the most important part to get right in tempura. It's very easy. There's just a few little tricks you have to keep in mind. So, I've got some cold sparkling water. Cold because it'll help regulate the temperature and keep the batter from burning. Sparkling because the bubbles will help really lighten up the batter and make it really crispy and delicious. So we'll start with about half a liter of that. and one egg. Whisk that up. And then we're going to add some plain flour. This is about 220 grams. Just whisk it in. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Nice, thin, light, bubbly, and a little bit lumpy. I'll start with the vegetables. By the way, if you don't have chopsticks, use tongs or just get involved with your hands. Get the courgettes in there first. So just make sure your vegetables nicely coated, not too thick. Give them a shake off. 
And if you like the look of this recipe and you want to learn more, just click subscribe. All right, so veg goes in. Don't try to fry too many at a time because they'll stick together. They'll also drop the temperature of the oil, which will result in soggy, sad, overcooked veg. So these will all cook for just three, four, maybe five minutes. You want them to be barely golden brown. It's a really light blonde color. And when you're ready to take them out, get a tray and line it with paper towel. And carefully put them out. Don't stack them on top of each other, of course, because the steam coming off of them will make the batter go soggy. So next we will do our lovely broccoli and into the oil. Next, of course, is asparagus. Those go in. Evenly coated. And into the oil. All right, these are good to go. Lastly, of course, the fish. All right, these are beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. There we go. Now we're ready to plate up. So usually, you'll serve tempura as a sort of communal platter in the middle of the table. People can tuck in, just grab from it with their chopsticks. Just dish that in. Lovely. And then we'll just arrange the tempura. And that's it. Tempura. Classic, delicious, easy, and not as unhealthy as you might think. Be sure to tune in again. There's plenty more where this came from.